Hi everybody, Jeff Simon and Jake Simon here from Social Flight. I'm very fortunate to have Jake here on break from UMass for the winter. And uh, now it is time for us to do some more work on our Mustang, which is great. Uh, if you've watched our previous videos, you've seen that we've come a long way with the panel. That is uh, pretty much wrapped up. We've turned it, light, lit everything up. But there's one important thing that's missing, and that is plumbing. Plumbing <laughs> for our pedo and static system. So, Jay, can you explain what a pedo and static system is, what that does for, for people? Sure. So um, there's two systems that are crucial for uh, an airspeed indication. Uh, so the first is pedo. So there's ram air that comes from a pedo tube uh, and into the airspeed indicator. Um, and that pressure reading is referenced to uh, the pressure from the static lines. Mm -hmm. um, the static lines come from um, basically uh, two holes on the side of the fuselage. Yep. And uh, that brings a you know static pressure to the airspeed indicator. Yep. So... Uh, so for airspeed, we've got a reference. Yep. The you know that that pressure from that's coming in. You always see that little cool probe on the wing of a plane. Uh, if you're not a pilot, that's a pitot tube, and you've got to reference that against something because as you climb up, your altitude changes, your pressure changes. So that gets referenced to that static system. Now the static system alone is also used. What's that used for? So. Um in order to get a altitude indication, so basically to tell how high you are uh, off the ground or um, above sea level, uh, we get a uh, pressure reading from the static system alone. So the static system, again, from the sides of the fuselage, brings uh, static pressure to the airspeed indicator for um, an airspeed indication, uh, but also solely brings uh, information to the, um, the altimeter, yeah. to the altimeter. So on the tail of the aircraft, we actually have two. So it's kind of interesting, you know, on an airliner, you might see two separate systems, you might see many probes that do pedo, uh, but for most small planes, it's a single probe uh, that, that, uh, that brings air in for that reference, but they usually have one on each side of the fuselage for static. Those can get a little water in them or something like that. It also kind of evens out if you're in a slip or a skid. It's nice to make sure that you're, you're balancing both sides of the tail. So now it is time for us to actually go and plumb all this together. And there's a lot of options. Uh, mm -hmm. Jake, take us through like some of the stuff that's here on the table. Yeah, so uh, there's two main ways of doing this. Um, there are uh, kind of more, there are harder lines. So mm -hmm. a little stiffer um, lines like this, yep. um, which a lot of certified aircraft use. Um, and the other is uh, these flexible uh, kind of rubber lines. Mm -hmm. um, so these are much easier to run uh, just because you can make bends um, and uh, they kind of just stick right onto uh, the fittings uh, and you can use some safety wire to uh, hold them in place. However, there are a lot of cons to this. The first being because it's so uh, kind of malleable, if you put it in too tight of a uh, radius bend, you end up getting kinks and that will throw off your reading. The other is just because it's so soft, um, little nicks with your nail or any uh, securing mechanism like safety wire or um, uh, zip ties uh, have the potential to cut this line. And if you're not getting direct pressure from the pitot tube or the static line where the air can go somewhere else other than the instruments, uh, that can become a real problem. Right. So like leaks in a pitot and a static system are a problem. That's why aircraft uh, every two years have that altimeter check and also a pedostatic leak check done. Yep. Uh, that's really important. So this is like nylo flow tubing and there's a bunch of different brands of this but uh, and, and a few different sizes. But essentially the most common is a quarter outside diameter, quarter inch outside diameter. And um, you can get it in different colors as we've had it here. And this is very resilient. It, it's very difficult to damage. Um, and, and it's a good way to kind of run throughout the fuselage. The downside is it's this type, at least this Nyla flow that you see here in white is very, very difficult to bend. Um, now, Jake, we did find some black mm -hmm. stuff here. I don't know whether it's that it's, one. So or this it's a one. slightly different material. Um, it seems a lot more resilient than, um, uh, this more malleable, um, softer line. Uh, but it seems a little bit easier to bend uh, right. because we have so many avionics behind the panel and we're tying it all together. Uh, you need a way to be able to kind of go around some of the avionics and some of the wires and stuff like that. So this seems like 
uh, kind of the candidate where you get the uh, kind of strength and resilience of uh, a stiffer line, uh, but still um, the ability to kind of pass the yeah. conduits and stuff like that. Now you still have to put in T's and elbows and yep. fittings to, to, to be able to reach anything. And one of the coolest things compared to like old, the way this was done old school, well, uh, you go even to Home Depot and you can find just those barbed fittings, barbed T's that you might use for an irrigation system or anything like that. That's the old school way of doing things, obviously with higher quality fittings, uh, inside uh, the panel, behind the panel. But the newer, nice, uh, nice way of doing things are quick disconnects. And these are readily available pretty much anywhere. And um, there, why don't you explain these, these uh, quick disconnects, Jake? Yeah, so um, these quick dis disconnects are really cool because they provide a uh, really strong, tight fit. But in the name, the quick disconnect, you have the ability to pop it off mm -hmm. without having to take off safety wire, or uh, kind of just yank it and hope that you don't rip a mm -hmm. line or enlarge a line or something. So yeah. the line stays intact and you have the ability to uh, secure it in a really easy way. So uh, an example of it is you have a, uh, a hard line like this and all you need to do is press it in and uh, it's you know press fit into the fitting. Right. In order to uh, disconnect it, you can press on this blue um, kind of like ring, the right disconnect here, ring. The disconnect yeah. ring, and uh, it has the ability to uh, pop off. And there's a little mechanism inside that clasps it in there, just to make sure that it's all secure. Yeah. So these are really common. They're very inexpensive. They they have a, a really good track record for not having leaks. Um, so they're great fittings, and you can get them in so many varieties. You can get them as in like this. This is one here that uh, brings two kind of in line into one or one into two. Uh, they have T's, they have regular fittings. There's a, a whole bunch of different kinds or just straight pastures if you need to connect one line to another where it has a break in it. So uh, lots of lots of options and, uh, and a great way to go. That's what we are going to use with the exception of a few areas where it's gonna make sense for us to still use a soft line. When you do this, make sure you're getting the right size. As Jake noted uh, before, it is, uh, you know, they have uh, some that are in millimeters and some that are in quarter inch. Most of these fittings are designed that we're using for quarter inch outside uh, diameter. And uh, so that, that's kind of a standard um, and probably what you wanna use. But like I said, there's lots of varieties, there's lots of colors. Um, so uh, pretty cool way of doing things. And then the last thing is going to be the actual fittings that we use for our static ports. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to explain how Titan uh, says and, and Vans and a bunch of these other aircraft manufacturers, um, how they have you do it, but then there's someone out there that came up with some fittings that we're mm -hmm. going to use instead. Definitely. So uh, how Titan and Vans have done it in the past and how they've uh, kind of instructed some builders is um, you take a rivet and you drill through the center of the rivet. Mm -hmm. So you basically have uh, your... Just pop out the mandrel. Yeah, you, you basically, basically just pop out the mandrel and that's your way of getting uh, air from the outside right into a line and you can kind of secure your hard line or... Uh, whatever static or PL yeah. line that you use. You just uh, glue it into place yeah. so that the tail of the rivet's just sticking in there. Um, I mean, that I'm, sh I'm sure clearly that works, but I really like that someone uh, and, and a few different people out there have come up with fittings instead mm -hmm. that we can drill and use a nut and has barbs on it and we can have yeah. a much more secure fit and there's no gluing. Yeah, it basically has the uh, very similar profile to a um, kind of like a, a wide head uh, rivet However, on the back side, uh, it has the perfect um, attachment point for a, a pitot or static line. So yep. it, uh, this seems like the way to go for our for our build, and uh, will give us like a really strong connection uh, without having to use glue. Exactly. And for our Aspen, we've got special fittings that Aspen supplies that uh, that does that. We'll be using those fittings, and uh, it's time to get on with the build. We've got to take this mess put it in there. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jake, let him do a bunch of building, and then we'll, uh, we'll show you the final product. Sounds you ready? Good. Yeah. All right, let's get to work.
Okay, so we're back behind the panel and we've already run the pitot and static lines coming from the True Track, Auto, True Track Autopilot on the other side um, of the plane. We ran the lines going under the Avidyne stack up to a T-fitting, which connects it to the um, Aspen PFD. Coming from uh, this T-fitting, we can then plumb it to uh, intercept the other two instruments. We have our airspeed indicator, which takes pitot and static, and our uh, AV20, which also takes pitot and static. So we're gonna be using these um, uh, T-fittings, these quick to disconnect T-fittings, uh, which will uh, allow all of the pitot and static lines to uh, join together. But at the same time, we wanna use the uh, smallest amount of these as possible uh, to limit our risk of a, a vacuum leak and uh, both in flight and during maintenance and stuff like that. So we're gonna, uh, with a little bit of heat, we can uh, make some bends in our vacuum lines. Um, but uh, you know, some of the big bends and where we have to tie things together, we're gonna be using these quick disconnects. So we're gonna run the lines coming from the AV20, using T fitting uh, with the um, airspeed indicator and tie it all with the rest of the system. We're gonna plumb this all the way back. The static line is gonna go to the back of the aircraft um, where the probes are on the side of the fuselage. And the pitot system is going to go through the floor and out the wing um, to our pitot tube. Alright, so Jake took care of the pitot and static lines all behind the instrument panel, just about everything except for it exiting, going down to where the center section is going to be. Mm -hmm. And so now we need to work on the rear seat instrument panel, the passenger instrument panel in the rear seat. That has the AV30, which takes a pitot and a static line, and that has to get run down into the baggage compartment area. And then we can work on wrapping that up and putting in the actual static ports into the side skins. Now, um, uh, we've been using uh, the black, more flexible uh, line, which was really great for in front, but what we found during a little bit of experimenting is that that's not actually the best stuff when you have to make really tight turns. It's actually the harder stuff. And so uh, this is polyflow. This is um, uh, pretty rigid. I mean, you know, you can move it, but it's tough. Uh, uh, that's used in a lot of certified aircraft. It's great material to be used for pitot and static lines. When you heat it, you can actually get it to bend in and stay in harder angles. The trick to doing that, uh, as we've discovered, is to take a, a piece of wire, so this is probably a like number 10 wire, I think, and you slip it in and then do the heated bend and then remove the wire. That keeps it from collapsing on itself when you actually do that. And so I've uh, gone and done that, and this is an example of a bend that you can make. It's pretty significant, um, pretty hard to angle there, and yet it didn't collapse the tube at all because pushed this in, did the bend, and then pulled the wire back out afterwards. So this is really important for coming out of the AV30 and then working its way down. Mm -hmm. So let's get to work. Let's get this last part done. We're gonna work our way all the way back to the baggage compartment and finish our pitot static system. You ready? Mm -hmm. Sounds good.
All right, well that's it for another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Special thanks to Jake who came home from UMass Engineering uh, in order to uh, be uh, back on winter break and work on the Mustang again. Makes a huge difference in making progress to get this thing wrapped up and out of our home. Yep. Not that we're really dying to get it out of our house. I have to say it's pretty cool having it in here, but we're getting quite close because the pedostatic system is done except for its connections outside of the fuselage. So all that's in place, it's very exciting. We've just got a few more things to wrap up inside the fuselage and then we can just start closing it up. We'll get to the canopy after that. Then we'll get this thing moved out, start working on landing gear, the center section, the wings and everything it takes to get this thing flying. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. Play the Fly to Win Challenge. We're giving away prizes all the time. All you need to do is have that on your phone. Go check in at an airport, get points. You could win uh, one of our really, really great prizes. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon and I wish you all blue skies. <laughs>